Hi everybody, welcome to In Pillow Talk, another awesome day. We're grateful to God for his mercies that are new every day. My prayer for you today is that may your tomorrows, may you have an encounter with God that changes your tomorrow, that your tomorrows will be better than your yesterdays. In Jesus' name. A story that really blessed me and I thought I'd share it with us today. The question only came about Somebody asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? When Jesus asked, told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And he said a parable. It says there was a man who was going on a business trip. And armed robbers met him along the way, got him well beaten almost to death and left him on the wayside. The priest came walk past. The Levites came walk past. But a foreign Samaritan who didn't know him went down from his horse, picked him up, cleaned his wounds, carried him on his horse, took him to hospital, paid for the entrance, and left a message that if there is any more cost and cured, please, I will come and pay it off. But let the guy be treated and treated well. And he left. And Jesus then goes to ask them who was the neighbor. And somebody said the guy moved with compassion. He says, do likewise to others. And I thought, wow, how many of us, we read it, we always look at our neighbors as maybe just your wife, your children, your family, the next door neighbor who lives by you. But your next door neighbor could be a stranger on the road. Will you pass just as the Levites passed by? Would you be the priest? Who'll walk past because it's not affecting you? Or will you be moved with compassion and stop? Where your friend has lost a job. I just brought that story and I started meditating. If my friend lost a job, will I try to be, how do we get a job for you? How do we make sure you're standing on your feet? I have a business. Would you want to come and work with me? I'll pay you. Would you come and clean for me? I'll pay you because I am able just to make sure you come out of the house. But oh no, most of us wouldn't do that. We'll actually gossip about them. We'll actually derail them with drinking, partying, going, taking them to stupid parties from one place to another. And you'll lessen their lives instead of making them focus on how to improve themselves. Some of us would refuse the jobs because you think that is too belittling. The friend is giving me that to belittle me. Mm -mm. When you're down, he heals his down, fears no fall. When you're down, it doesn't matter. So long as it brings the money in your home, you're taken care of. Probably in that position, you will meet God. In that position, you will meet a neighbor who will change your story. But we don't see it like that because we're looking in the noun and we're worried about what others will say. Did you derailed? But on Sunday, we'll quietly carry Bibles and go on praise and sing. Who are we pretending? To ourselves or to God? You could be that person who sees their friends sick. Instead of you actually spending time to call, go and take your friend to hospital or spend time to go and treat them, spend time to even pray for them. No, you spend time in gossiping what kind of disease they have, what they do. They brought this on themselves. You knew the lifestyle they were living. Some of them drank too much. That's why their liver is... You've become a doctor. You've become a judge. You've become uh, 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 everything in, in one. And you assassinate them like that. Some of us can be hear the stories of those people's marriages, that there's adultery, the women are committing adultery, the men are committing adultery. You don't then be the light to bring light in it. You encourage them. Hey, boy, I saw your girlfriend. She's walking with foot hair. Buy her a car. You, oh, I saw her. She's struggling too much. She, you need to. How many times have you come to the man's house to see that the wife is eating or to see that the wife is happy? But you're more worried about what the girlfriend is doing. This is a married man or this is a married woman. You're encouraging that because iron sharpens iron. That's what all of you are doing. There are a few men I respected. But when I came to find out what they were doing outside or in the dark, as they claim to do because they are very secretive, they are very cunning. You can con your wife, you can write all the crap on Facebook, you can do and you do. Guess what? You're doing it with somebody and it always has a funny way of coming out. 
Are we being a brother's keeper? Are we being the next door neighbor to one another? But on Sunday, we'll go with the family to church and pretend as if, and then come back and be somebody completely different. Who are we deceiving? Ourselves or God? You know, the blessed thing is, I remember I had a friend. Uh, I, I'm not going to call names because so many people know them. He was doing something that I was totally against and I didn't agree. I called him one day when I met him and I told him what I thought about what he was doing and how disrespectful it was to the wife. I don't agree with that. And guess what? The guy saw me in another occasion. He gave me a big hug. He showed me his wife and he said, thank you so much. I knew the wife. He said, thank you so much. I said, you're welcome. He went and told another friend of mine. The friend came and told me, he says, I respect, I respect her because she's the only one who has confronted me with the wrong I'm doing. And every time I see her, if I'm doing something wrong, I feel so ashamed. How many of us are willing, but you're so weak, you're so scared to think that, oh, somebody will think, somebody will abuse me. If you want to abuse me, my darling brothers and sisters, you're very free. I never said I was perfect. I never said I was God anyway. But I will hold the Christ light for any of my brother, my sister, my neighbor. Doesn't matter who you are. So long as the Lord has given us an unction to say, go out and do bring the light to each other i would learn to be a light to you i would always always be that light to you whether you like me whether you don't make sure if you see me i would always love to hold the light of christ in your presence that whatever darkness that is going through whatever issues that we're going through we can work it together. I will hold the light not only to tell you. I will hold the light to cry with you when you're crying. I will hold your light to dance with you when you're dancing. I will hold the light that we will walk together and get to the other side. I want to be a brother's next door neighbor. I want to love a neighbor just as I love myself. I love me to beats. And so whoever wants to, I would always, God willing, hold the light so you can see Christ through me. For us to be that light holders and light bearers for one another, we need to transform ourselves. Stop living double lives. Clean your heart that Christ may dwell in it and be the light that he has made us to be. We need you to be that light, to encourage and empower us so we don't fall. We all are bound to fall if we don't hold one another in light. Be the light. Love your brother. Love your sister. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let Christ light seen through you hold the light to each other thank you so much love you guys bye for now <laughs>